Jennifer Kalker, and I'm your host for today's show, um, Your Bridge to Addiction Resources with the People Chronicles. And I have two guests here with me from Brandywine. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about Brandywine Heights Community Task Force. So thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Thank um, you for having us. Yes, of course. I'm excited to learn more about Brandywine, too, um, as long as our listeners are learning, too. So um, can you just introduce yourself and just say who you are and what you do with the task force? Sure, my name is Maria Winkler and I am the Vice President of the Task Force. I also am a parent. I have two children um, growing up in the school district and I volunteer with the Task Force as much as time allows. That's awesome. And I'm Andrew Podiger. I'm the uh, President of the uh, Task Force as well as the Superintendent of the Brain and Wayne Heights Area School District. Great, so both of you are involved on different levels, multiple levels. Correct. Within <laughs> we try. <laughs> which yes. is, it's a very fluid thing, that's yes. great. Yes. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about how this all got started? Because you guys have only been around for two years, which is amazing because you've done a lot. So how yeah. did, what kind of sparked this to begin? It was a 2013-14 year mm -hmm. and uh, in our community we had a lot of overdoses unfortunately that were happening. and. Um, as things kind of progressed through the summer of, of 2013 to 2014 in the winter, um, unfortunately the, the frequency of the overdoses was, mm -hmm. was picking up. And um, there was a lot of beginning to have an outcry from the community. And yeah. in our community, it's a small community. It's a rural town uh, in, in Topton. And the hub of our community is the school. There's not a lot of other organizations. There's not a community center. It's okay. the school. So I really felt as in my role as superintendent at the time, yeah that we really needed to do something and, and take some action. So what we did is we brought together a town hall meeting and uh, had uh, Senator Schwenk involved, had uh, the DA's office yeah, involved, the state police. Yeah, it was a really powerful day. We had 500 people from the community come out. It was Which that does not amazing. happen yeah. often with it these other things. It was amazing. <laughs> so that yeah. is phenomenal. And, and what we did is we wanted to make sure people had a voice because again, every, there was a lot of outcry. Yeah. And so what we did is we yeah. broke a whole, whole bunch of people from the community that was clergy, some school district administration, um, community leaders that organized and we broke up those 500 people into 13, 14, 15 rooms okay. and then had a small group discussion wow. based off of all the same kind of pointed topics, mm -hmm. brought all that information back together and then basically that was the thrust to get the community task force started. And that wow. gave us the direction, it gave us the vision and um, it was a little bit slow in kind of figuring out what, it, what was our goal, what was our purpose. Uh, but we have really thrived from that point on. So we've been, April 2014 was really the beginning of our journey, if you will. <laughs> yeah. No, and it's, I, I look at it and I just admire what Brandy Wine's done because you took something that was so disastrous mm -hmm. and was really heartbreaking and have brought so much life from that because you're doing so many good things now. So um, can you tell me a little about what you're doing now in the community since you've been around for two years, some of your successes? Sure. Well, we meet every Tuesday okay. um, and our core group shows up and we plan um, events um, to give people in the community a positive outlet. Uh, outlet. Um, and we have two really important events coming up, our signature events, if you will, a Battle of the Bands, which um, the high school is kind enough to host for us. Um, it was very well attended last year and um, we raised money um, doing that and a Red Ribbon Run, which is coming up during Red Ribbon Week in October. Yeah and um, use the money that we can raise um, at those events to put toward our after school program. Um, we started up an after school program uh, mid-year 2000, what was that? Was that 14. 14, 14. Yeah, it was 14. So this will be the, 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 our second year doing second a full year. year. And that's offered to our middle school students. We invited the YMCA to partner with us. Um, which has been a really great thing. Um, they come in, help us staff the program, um, run activities for the sixth okay. to eighth graders. We've okay. been able to do it at no cost um, to encourage um, participation from the students because those hours, so many students are unsupervised mm -hmm. um, and we've offered them a place to be um, and have that time be constructive. Yeah. So that's one thing that we're very proud of and that we want to grow the program, we want to strengthen the program. Um, but we're going to start off this year with um, really high expectations for it. Yeah. So how many students do you have involved with the after school program? We have typically 25 to 30 on a daily basis, um, but we've had basically we have 100 rostered. So they, it ebb and flows, like yeah. the sports season, mm -hmm. they yeah. might come and no. go, but um, we're really looking forward to this year. We have some new coordinators and they look to bring yeah. a lot of energy into the program yeah. and that 
that's going to be really yeah, exciting. Yeah, they, they seem to be very um, student-centered and that yeah. they want to have um, the, the kids that are coming really play a role in their own program, and yeah. we're really excited about that. Yeah. And the day structure to give them some downtime, so they've been in school for six and a half, seven <laughs> hours. Yeah. The last thing they want to do is be sitting there yeah. again. So yeah. we give them some downtime, yeah. it's TV, radio. Okay. Um, we got a lot of donations from the community, so there's a pool table, foosball. Awesome. Uh, they go they outside and do some organized sports. Yeah. Um, they'll have, and, and it's all volunteer. So yeah. it, it's, it's a volunteer from the community that comes in and helps, but it's also what other students want to do and get involved in. We help kind of steer the program to their needs because if they're interested and they want to be there, the more kids that'll come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. So that's what you have going on for middle school. So Correct. what else do you have for other age groups? Because it sounds like you're kind of hitting everybody. We're like trying. There's something yeah. <laughs> that is something yeah. for that's everybody. That's right. Yeah. Let me let me just kind of do two big pillars. Yeah. Uh, I talked about the vision a little bit of the task force. We we have two pillars and kind of this prevention and awareness. Okay. And so through those two areas, we target either the elementary school, um, the middle school, the high school, and even the community. And so from, an, from the community perspective, we've done a lot of parent nights mm -hmm. where we have um, Council, Council of Chemical Abuse, yeah, we partner yeah, with you guys a lot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> phenomenal. Um, we had the little clicker show the other day, it was yeah, like the, the quiz right. for, for the yeah. parents, but yes. it's been neat. So the, the parents have been learning. We've tried all different um, areas. We've done some, some of these parent nights in churches. Mm -hmm. We've done some yeah. connected inside the school. Anywhere we can do to try to garner some of that interest. And most recently we're thinking about even doing it at some of our sporting practices. So in her <laughs> soccer practice and the parents are all sitting Just around sitting, yeah, where the thing, chit chatting. <laughs> this is a great opportunity. No, so, that's a great Yeah, that's, that's our future for that. But that's kind of what we're what we're pushing in the community okay. what it's done as I continue to talk about community a little bit is it's given the the businesses mm -hmm. and the people an outlet as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so they know there's an issue. Mm -hmm. They want to help and so doing yeah. these things like the band without of the bands and the five mm K -hmm. run yeah. and doing these parent mm -hmm. nights, we've been getting a lot of support monetarily as well as yeah. volunteerism mm -hmm. to make this work. It's um, like the businesses so were looking for a way to help, but they yeah. weren't quite sure how. And um, when we got a group of task force volunteers to go out and speak with them, they were like, yes, we've been, we've been wanting to help. So that was really encouraging because we were, you know, a little nervous about trying to throw a battle of the bands in such yeah. a small community, but it was really embraced and we were so, so excited. Yeah, because mm -hmm. how, if you don't mind me asking, yeah. how, how many students are in Brandywine School District? Mm -hmm. Because I, I recognize it's a small community. Yeah. It's right? 1,500 students total. Oh my God. So yeah. great graduating yeah. classes yeah. between 100 and 150. Oh yeah. So for you to have 100 kids registered for a middle school thing is a is it's, basically yeah. the whole grade. It's a third. It's, it's a, a third, third of our yeah. of our population yeah. in the middle school. Yeah, sixth, yeah. seventh, eighth grade. That's amazing. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So you know we look at it again prevention awareness. Yeah. Uh, and yes, what are we doing at some of the other levels? Mm -hmm. At the elementary school, we're really proud to be able to partner with, again, Council of Chemical Abuse. Yeah. You worked with us to look at what are some prevention programs we can put in yeah. place for our elementary students. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we piloted a program last year. I had two or three teachers from each grade level, K to five, pilot the Too Good for Drugs curriculum. Mm -hmm. uh, they thought it was phenomenal. It gives really good life skills and yeah. prevention strategies for these students that they don't necessarily have before. And, Maria, I think you said earlier you're a parent in the school district. Yeah. I am as well. Mm -hmm. And it was yeah. neat for my girls to come home with the information. Yeah. And it sparked a conversation Absolutely. that we could have at the yeah. dinner table yeah. that yeah. we probably would have anyways. But I know now as a superintendent, yeah. now putting this hat on, yeah. Yeah. that every family is having that having conversation. I, I think the yeah. conversations in our community have really opened up. Because I know, I don't know if I'd be talking to my second and third grader about yeah. this, but now we are. Yeah. Um, and I, I hear that from other other parents as well. Like now we're talking about this. Well, and um, what's so great about that is it's not just in the classroom. Mm -hmm. You are in the community. Mm -hmm. At the bus stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're all over the place. So yeah. it's that conversation mm -hmm. lives in so many different yeah. places. It's not just in one it location. Does. Yeah. Which I think is why there's so much power behind what you're doing is it's just all over the place. And, and the <laughs> well, the neat part is the connection. So. Yeah we're piloting at the school and the teachers are involved but mm -hmm. it's the task force that's going to pay for the curriculum yeah. and so that's all funded through the task force okay. and again now it circles back to the businesses yes. that so, wanted to be supportive yeah. and basically yeah. funded us to yeah. do this and so it's a really neat yeah. interconnection that's happening yeah. and so now the, now the important thing is to go back out and say okay here's the messaging mm -hmm. yeah. businesses okay. that helped us this is where your money went yeah. you now have supported the program that's going to do x y and z yes. to, to prevent future issues yeah. um, 
And so. it's, it sounds cliche, but we are building bridges. It's yeah. almost like there were so many different um, organizations, the school, churches, businesses, um, community members that wanted to do something, but nobody quite knew how. Yeah. So now we get to figure out how. You actually can reach yeah. out to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. um, and I know you have with the Council on Chemical Abuse, I know I came to help out with education, with the, uh, yes. the middle schools. So what other organizations have you been partnering with? Because we talked a little bit earlier, it's a little overwhelming with <laughs> yeah. all the information and resources that are available in Berks County. And you guys have really grabbed a hold of that. So you're working with some other Yeah, we, we have, it, in starting this again, kind of rewind ourselves back to 2014 yeah. when we started this, we were flooded with agencies that, that helped. And, and sitting in my role as superintendent, I had no idea that some of these organizations were even out there. And so <laughs> it, it was really neat to be able to go through and s constantly, I would get almost on a daily basis, I'd be getting a call from a different organization, hey, we can help you with this or that or the other thing. And, um, even parents that wanted to be supportive and give their story or be able to, to pitch in however they could. So some of the organizations we are partner now with, with the, um, with the um, task force as well as the school district. Yeah. Um, strong partnership with the YMCA. Okay. Uh, they have been great in running that after school program. Mm -hmm. Partnered with the United Way. The United Way gave a grant initially to start the after school okay. program. So that's that was yeah. where wow. the funding came from so yeah. excited. to happen. Yeah. So that after school program that we talked about is completely free for all our students sixth, seventh and eighth grade. Yeah. So they just come in and it runs from three o'clock uh, two thirty until 5.30 daily. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so again, completely free. So United Way was a great partner, the YMCA, the DA's office here, the Berks County Dir District Attorney's yeah. Office has been phenomenal. Um, they come out and do presentations. We did a mock bedroom search. So we set up a bedroom yeah. uh, for our middle school and our high school parents, okay. and then hid the drug paraphernalia inside the bedroom. And it sparked good conversation. If you yeah. find a bunch of spoons in your classroom, yeah, exactly. yeah, what is that? Yeah, And so the, the hidden soda bottles with the, what does it even mean? Between. I mean, right. I'm in the field too, and I even learned some stuff when I was there. I was like, I would not have thought of yeah. that. Yeah. So, it's but really as parents go through that, it gives them good insight. It makes them think yes. just a second time. Okay, maybe I yeah. do need to be a little concerned if I see this, that, or the other thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, district yeah. attorney's office, mm -hmm. um, Pennsylvania State Police. Mm -hmm. They've been a, a great partner. The, our boroughs and townships. Yeah, we've grown those they've relationships. Been, they've been they so have been supportive. Really good. Okay. Um, our local clergy. I meet. I meet at my superintendent role. I meet with them quarterly. But they have been okay. great at attending our meetings mm -hmm. with the task force, mm -hmm. um, pitching in however they can, um, monetarily mm -hmm. as well yeah. as volunteer. Yeah. And getting the message out at the pulpit mm -hmm. on Sundays. It's, <laughs> it's been good. It's, it's serious. Everywhere. Yeah. yeah. And our, our battle of the bands last year was our first event, and I, I had to giggle a little because we had churches setting up booths. Because they wanted to, they wanted yeah. to see the community. Yeah. We had the library come down. They wanted to promote their yes. programs. It was just, it was really a, a great community event, yeah. bringing everyone together, bringing Karen, unity. Yeah. Yeah. Karen, Karen Foundation, Foundation has been, yes. yeah, they were there. They've been mm -hmm. a great partner. Um, yeah. So, they, and I'm sure I'm missing a thousand others. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's it's been really neat to see all those supportive agencies coming together, yeah. and basically helping us give us direction because yeah. we can say. This is what we think that the need is, but we're not quite sure. Yeah. <laughs> and then they say, okay, well, we're only to jump in. Yeah. Uh, so it's been really powerful. It's just, yeah, I, it's just so exciting to me listening because I've, I've heard of Brandy Wines Task Force for mm -hmm. years now um, since you guys started, but just knowing what all you're doing mm -hmm. is just, I can't get over it. It's just <laughs> really great. You know who I've really gotten a lot of support from is um, our high school SAD group, Students yeah. Against okay. Destructive yes, Decisions. They have. They have volunteered with us. They have given us ideas. They've come to our meetings. Um, they've been so supportive. And it's, it's, it's so important to bring the kids in. Yeah. yeah. And some of the program that they've done mm -hmm. has been recognized at the state level. But it's more importantly, it's neat to see the, that it's making an impact on our students. Mm -hmm. And so that we were talking a little before this that we yeah. had a, brought a, uh, uh, an individual that was, was in the attic of heroin and um, hit, hit pretty much a really bottom low. Um, the police arrested her and so that she now works with the state and comes in and does presentations mm -hmm. and our students our sad students students against destructive decisions yeah. saw her in a conference and decided this would be good for our whole student body so they brought her in and, and they had all our students 30 50 students at a time and she did her story over and over through the day and uh, great conversations mm -hmm. the students could ask any question they wanted to and it, it sparked that curiosity that they might have yeah. it sparked that conversation mm -hmm. and the messaging over and over again was don't do this 
because look what it did to my life. I have a child that I didn't even know for a few years because I was, mm. I was in such turmoil. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was, it was a very powerful message that our students needed to hear at a, at a conversation level, yeah. not a, this is, don't do drugs. You know, yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. and the students really said, we don't want any more assemblies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. They wanted to sit down and talk. Yes, yeah. but that's where, I, we hear so much about breaking the stigma of addiction. Like, and I, yeah. as we're sitting here, I'm just hearing in my head, break the, breaking the stigma, like that's what you guys are doing. Yeah. Because you're yeah. starting that conversation and you're allowing yeah. kids to feel comfortable to talk about it. Because that's where light comes to the darkness of what addiction becomes. Mm -hmm. And so what you're doing is just, it's bringing that. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get I'm not gonna get to it. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it's, thank so, you. Yeah. Thank but you. it's true. It's it just, is. It is. Yeah. It's and, a beautiful thing. And that's kind of the messaging that I, another thing we, we all say is that once someone decides to use, and, and they become an addict, then we need to help them with the prevention side of it. And so again, Definitely. when we go back to prevention and awareness, yes. what can we do to help them yes. to get them to the road to recovery? And that's more the awareness piece to make sure that they, we, we do presentations to our community, which we have uh, to our faculty. I had a whole presentation where we, you guys are involved in that again, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we did a whole faculty presentation of what is addiction and, and we can't treat it as uh, that they're a drug addict. We had to treat it as it's a disease, and how can we help? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it made a bad decision. We can't we can't overlook that. But yeah. so then we then we go from the point of prevention. So yes. if someone made a bad decision, why? And that can, kind of ties back to the ties elementary and the middle school yeah. piece yeah. of mm -hmm. the after school program, the curriculum, so that they don't. We all face tough situations, and some of our kids, I, I honestly don't know how they make it through and come to school every day, but they do yeah. with a smile on their face. Yeah. But how do we help them so that they don't turn to drugs? or alcohol mm -hmm. as they get older, that they yeah. can deal with their yeah. stress health in a very healthy manner. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, and so that, that kind of is the whole tie together so that the, the addiction piece, and we don't get to the addiction, but if we do, there's awareness that it's actually uh, something we need to deal with, and how can we help the student, the, yeah. the people that are dealing with it? Resources that. are available, because just like you were learning so much about what's available, yeah. community members still, mm -hmm. I'm sure, are learning Absolutely about what's are. available yeah. for yeah. all of us in the county. Yeah. yeah. So um, I just, I'm interested in a little bit about what you've learned personally, mm -hmm. if you want to start, Maria, about yeah. what you've learned personally in this mm -hmm. experience or professionally mm -hmm. just um, being a part of the task force. Yeah. I think just to pick up on what Andrew was saying, um, I had to learn that it's a disease. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily a choice. And I think that learning that and, and seeing addiction that way allows me to, to share that with my family, my children, their friends. Um, and if that message is out there and, and others are, are talking about it, then we're, we can get through it together. Um, and I just, I, I, I felt like our community needed those bridges and I see those bridges being built and yeah. it's so encouraging. Um, and I'm just really proud to be a part of it. Yeah. What about you, Andrew? Uh, for me, again, it, the first part was just knowing how many resources are out there. I, like, I had no idea <laughs> yeah. the amount of support and resources, the networking that is available. Um, and then on the personal level, I, I'm going to echo what you said, is yeah. just understanding mm -hmm. the disease. Because I, I was naive to think, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a choice, it's a, yeah. it's someone's choosing to do this, it's an option mm -hmm. in their life, and it, it's not. Mm -hmm. when, when you, they had to make that, that choice originally. Initially, yeah. right. Uh, right. I, Absolutely, but once they have started that, and you know, the statistic that I use often, and I, I, I use it that uh, really resonates with me, is that the first time you use, there's a 50% chance that you are going to be an addict the rest mm -hmm. of your life, mm -hmm. and that is so powerful to think that that's that's your whole life. I mean, yeah. you've just kind of by one chance have yeah. taken and I'm not thrown everything away, but have a really long road ahead of you and. Um, knowing the struggles that people have to go through and trying to get that message out to mm -hmm. the community, out to our teachers, out to our, our kids if they're not going down that negative path yeah. is, is the biggest concern. Yeah, and that's something that we, um, you guys are just, I mean, it's a community thing. So many of us, that's what we're trying to just educate about the disease of addiction because people don't understand um, just the seriousness of what it becomes and how people are sick. You know, they just, they need help, and so there, and there are resources, and there's hope that they're going to get better. Um, and it's just great that you guys are doing that and helping others learn, too, as you're learning in yeah. this process. Thank um, you. 
So is, is there anything else that you want to share about what you've been doing? Um, I think I just like to welcome new volunteers, yeah? um, suggestions, ideas. Like we are open. We, you know, we don't pretend to know exactly what we're doing all the time. Like we are open to new volunteers, um, new information, new ideas. Um, yeah. Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> Second Tuesday. And I'll put two plugs in real quick because yeah. you read said Red in. Ribbon Run and uh, Battle of the Bands. So Battle of the Bands, yes. mm -hmm. free concert. We bring yeah. all kinds of bands that are just starting out and yeah. have a battle. Yeah. And they kind of and there's the judges that are involved. To September 17th, okay. free to the community. That's brand new in high school. And then on October 22nd is the Red Ribbon Run, a 5K run. Yes. So if anyone's to support those two events. September 17th, Battle of the Band, October 22nd. And these are Band. annual events, right? This is they are, this is yeah. Second, second so, yep. Yep. so even if someone's listening to this two years from now, yep. you probably are still um, happening. October and September, <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's right. <laughs> That's great. Well, thank you so much thank for taking you. the time to join um, our show and just tell us about all the wonderful things that are happening at Brandywine. And I wish you guys the greatest success to continue doing what you're doing. Um, if you want more information um, about what you've learned today, definitely contact the Brandywine Area um, Heights task force. You can also visit our website to learn more about what resources are available in Berks County at www.cogoberks.org. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Check back every week for a new story with your bridge to addiction resources. You can call 610-376-8669 or visit online at cogoberks.org. C-O-C-A-B-E-R-K-S.org. Be sure to like and follow the Council on Chemical Abuse on Facebook and Twitter.